we go. Okay. All right. Uh, good night, everyone. Uh, welcome to the second part of our series around sitting volleyball. And today we will be talking more from a community perspective. We're really lucky that we have someone who's been involved in para sport for quite some time and in many different perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, we heard from Chris uh, in our last episode. Uh, from more from an athlete perspective, but this one, this guest we have this evening is uh, way broader in, in, in the experience that she brings to Paris sport and what she will be doing with sitting volleyball in, uh, in the coming years. Um, so once again, I'm lucky to have Ali, um, Ali Fass from Or Diversity, Inclusion and Equity Committee uh, join us to co-host. Um, and Ali, just like our guest tonight, uh, about part of the Brock Niagara Penguins um, Paris Sport Club. Uh, and honestly, the best thing that Ali can bring as part of our conversation conversations are what she knows about, about her fellow members. So Ali, I'm going to pass it on to you to introduce our guest tonight. Absolutely. Um, so we have Loretta Davis joining us tonight. Um, so Loretta is one of uh, one of the sitting volley sitting volleyball athletes uh, with us at the Niagara, um, the Brock Niagara Penguins. Um, but more importantly, I think when anyone who knows the Penguins organization um, and the community, um, Loretta is is one of those people that you just um, automatically connect and, and they're kind of joined together. She's a, a huge advocate for um, for parasport and, and disability and, and everything she takes part in in the community as well. Um, she's a coach, um, an athlete, um, and just a genuine good person uh, and, and someone I, I consider a friend. So uh, uh, welcome, Loretta, and uh, thank you for joining us. Yeah, Ali, for those kind words. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, Loretta, you're one of the first faces I've literally seen around with uh, when I started getting involved in sitting in volleyball in Ontario um, mm -hmm. uh, for the last Parasport Games. Uh, I just remember, I can still remember processing, like signing you up online for the games and realizing, mm -hmm. oh, she's, she's competing in other sports and stuff as well. So that's awesome. <laughs> so um, I want to know, what, what's your history with Parasport? How did you get involved in Parasport in, in the first place? Um, so I started with the Penguins back like 15 years ago when they started, about well, six months after Penguins opened up. We met up with Karen Matho mm -hmm. and we wanted to start a wheelchair basketball. And that's kind of the sport I started with and kind of the passion I had running with the um, wheelchair basketball program. And then about nine years ago, I got asked to start coaching Bacha and that kind of just expanded. I, I've coached Bacha, I've rest Bacha and, and like everything got involved with that. And then when we started sitting volleyball, Karen had said to me, well, why don't you give sitting volleyball a try? It would encourage our younger athletes to get involved because I'm a, a major role model for them. They look up to me and yeah, they will, I if I try it, more. they will try it, right? So yeah. I figured, why not give it a shot? And I just happened to fall in love with it. I like the team sports the most. Like I really connect with the team sports, so... So, so what do you find most challenging and most rewarding from sitting volleyball specifically since you've been involved with uh, playing and coaching and all of that? Um, it's a, it's a great um, workout for sure. Like it, it's definitely breaks the body <laughs> more than you expect. Really, <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely my mobility up, which has been great for me. And uh, the, from the teamwork side, do you enjoy that? Like I know. Uh, like both as an able body volleyballer and my own trying of sitting volleyball for years, the teamwork part was like really, really like the connector for me. Yeah, our our Penguins teams are always kind of uh, close knit. We're like, we encourage each other. Like we we talk at, even after practice. We're all really close type type of crew. We're like almost like a little family is what we are. No, oh, that's that's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, we they usually have to kick us out because <laughs> yes, we don't want to stop up, uh, the school, and we're all just kind of sitting there taking our time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, 
the social part of sports is, is, is the part that stays with you the longest, right? So yes, exactly. So you're literally making memories. You're playing the games, but you're you're making mm -hmm. memories, right? Yeah. Uh, thankfully for that emotional side. Yeah, like we just hit one year to the the city volleyball tournament that we had, and mm -hmm. every penguin had posted pictures about that tournament. <laughs> like everybody loved that event. <laughs> uh, you know, from our side, from the OVA side, I don't think we had a, a chance to like sit down and chat. I know we just had like some email conversations mm -hmm. about how it went, mm -hmm. but the the staff that was there with me, it was their, their first city volleyball competition, like ever. Uh, so our communications mm -hmm. person um, or event coordinator, Oakland, um, uh, like they, this was their first experience ever. And they were blown away at how well administered you guys had it down like we thought we were going to come in and put up signs and do x y and z like we do for some of our indoor stuff mm -hmm. um our clubs handle that stuff too don't get me wrong um mm -hmm. but we you know we just like okay no this is the first one we probably have to, we didn't even have to do a thing you know yeah. you guys rolled yeah. in like i remember yeah. people walking through the door post a sign i'm like whoa well that's a good morning for you so yeah it's yeah like, the people that do our events which makes them run lots when you do right so yeah, yeah great team to run great event but like not just that i have to really give you guys kudos because you guys thought out of the box and even had kids uh who have down syndrome participate and we've mm -hmm. like from our end we've not done that before and that was like eye-opening to us how well those you know that integration went um, so, you know, kudos to you guys. Like we couldn't stop talking about it for weeks. Same on our end. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it, was, it was fun and, uh, yeah. and we look forward to when we can, when we can host do this. Uh, yeah. Next, well, next well, so do yeah, we, we're looking sure. at new rules and stuff that may come in play for sitting volleyball in terms of, um, safety for COVID. Um, mm -hmm. like a lot of this, the, the information I get is from volleyball England because I've been involved with them. Uh, I was exposed to involved through them, basically. Um, they're going with um, plastic wrapped nets to avoid uh, contact on top of mass. Um, so it's something that we 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 will have to like literally build and try out first and see how it works. Mm -hmm. yeah. So sure. Loretta, you're not only um, an athlete with sitting volleyball, but like you mentioned, uh, you've done a lot of coaching and you've won awards for your commitment and the the success you've been a part of. So. Um, how did you get started with that journey? Was coaching something you've always kind of enjoyed or? Honestly, coaching wasn't even on my radar when I first started with uh, Parasport. It was just, I just wanted to get active and get something going for adults in Niagara. And it wasn't, I didn't even think about coaching. It just happened to fall in my lap, <laughs> really. We really were looking for a coach that, because the, what the coach they had was leaving. So I filled in that gap that we needed to be filled. That's phenomenal. You did a very good job with it. It just yeah. worked out. Yeah. Yeah. It's um in the volleyball world in general, we are 80% female athletes, but uh we are also 80% male coaches. So it's great to see that like in the city volleyball world, there seems to be like a 50-50 split. And it's really good to have someone with like your experience uh as a female literally dive in there and be a leader so thank you so much for that i love working with the kids and getting them motivated to actually achieve achieve their goals right so. that's that's wonderful yeah. um so i want to pick your brain a little bit more about integration in sitting volleyball um ali had a conversation with me and she was telling me a story about how you guys paired with um, an able-bodied team from the niagara rapids mm -hmm. um uh, and how, uh, you know, th that team, the parents, the coaches, the kids were brave enough to come out. And I'm saying brave on their end because I didn't realize that they really hadn't worked with uh, personal disabilities before. Yeah. Um, so to come out and scrimmage with you guys to prepare for tournaments. Um, can you tell me how that relationship with the Rapids came about, if you have any idea? Um, and were there any significant experiences you observed from this relationship? Um, especially with like the able-bodied kids, their first interaction with, with playing with against persons with disabilities. Uh, I think they were a little shocked on how they were actually going to play. They didn't know how to react to it at first, really. And they honestly didn't, I don't think they really knew how to interact with us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind mm -hmm. of, it took them a little bit to warm up and kind of get comfortable with the situation. 
you got to thank Allie for bringing out the Rapids, which is great. It's great exposure for the kids to see that it, just because you have a disability doesn't mean you can't do things. You just have to do them in a different way. Exactly, exactly. I completely agree. I mean, that uh, you will know this, uh, but I'm, I'm sure our listeners and our viewers probably may feel it, but they are scared to express it sometimes. But, you know, they're, you know, as an able bo- able-bodied person, sometimes you're scared to interact with uh, someone with a disability in case you say something wrong or you think you do something wrong or, you know, mm-hmm. but yeah. the reality is if you want to integrate, break barriers, be, be equal, you know, just treat them like another person. Yeah, exactly. And that's what Literally. I always tell, even like our another, volunteers, I tell our, our volunteers, you just talk to them like they're normal people yeah. and they will yeah. they'll respond because we're a really open group. We can ask us almost anything and they don't get an answer. <laughs> yeah. And the same goes, I guess, with being on the yeah. court as well, like how you communicate uh, to your opponent. They're your opponents. You communicate just like you would in another game. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So would that be, would that be your advice for um, able-bodied people, Loretta, when working or when interacting with with anyone with disability? I've always said, like, you, if you have a question, don't be afraid to ask that person. They'll most likely be open to answering any questions. Or I've had a young kid come up to me and say, well, why is your shoe different than, than somebody else's? Because I have one leg shorter than the other. And I just like, tell them I was how I was born. And they, they take that as an acceptance. You just have to kind of age appropriate your response, right? So. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Uh, I like that. Any other advice that you have, like, especially with playing? Uh, one recommendation that uh, we've had recently, and it came up again last night with uh, the conversation with Chris, was this middle ground that we don't have. So we have the national team, mm-hmm. the high performance level, and we have the, the grassroots programs that are basically like your stuff. Mm-hmm. But if you want to go up a step, there's no, there's no middle ground, right? Um, what advice do you have for athletes who want to go into that middle step, um, who are able-bodied and also want to like volunteer their time to play against, you know, athletes who want to go that step up in their, their performance? Um, from like basketball performance point of view that we've had our able-bodied athletes uh, participate in, they're only allowed to participate at the provincial level in that mm-hmm. sport, but mm-hmm. they also is good for us to have some type of able-bodied people on our team. It can make us a competitor, more competitive team, right? As long as that they don't have like, a, they don't rely on that one athlete, right? They still have the confidence to keep going and you can do it too. You don't need that, don't necessarily have to rely on that person because that puts that extra pressure on those those athletes. That's so, an excellent point of view. I think it's, yeah, like I think it's, there's, a way that you can incorporate it so that you do have a little bit more of that competition. But I think more importantly, it's also a way to expose more able-bodied people to an atmosphere that they are not as familiar with. Like when we had the club teams come and practice with it, with us, it was after that um, a couple of the parents came up to me and just said, thank you for this my my son has never interacted with anyone with any sort of disability and it was a really really good learning experience for them yeah. of, of it opens how, their eyes to what what exactly. the experience and, is. oh they they see that like they've grown up with the opportunities to play on team sports and and play in these programs and that there are other opportunities for everyone as well and it's just mm-hmm. as important to to have um, those opportunities for them as well. Exactly. It opens opportunities for families to participate in a program together, right? So And start conversations. Yeah. And exactly. Yeah. yeah. They can do something together. They don't have to worry about, is there going to be a barrier for that person with a disability, right? So they can yeah. go, go and have some fun. Yeah. Some of them were even like, there were, I know there were times where some of them, I think just the way that we were interacting, just because we joke around and yeah, we have a good time basically. <laughs> like your eyes were kind of like oh my like, god oh my god exactly like, how are they and it's like yeah because they're just people like exactly I joke around with another person like these are my these are just pl- like players on my team there's nothing yeah. yeah we're all sitting on the ground but there, there's nothing else that um, you're still on the same playing field like <laughs> exactly and, and that's yeah. The thing about sitting volleyball that it doesn't matter because once you're all sitting on the ground, 
you're all it's it's anyone's game and and mm -hmm. people especially people who've never played before it is difficult and and Very. <laughs> until you actually try it out you you have no idea right exactly. I mean, honestly like i think anyone even seasoned players like it's tough <laughs> it's tough like i i look at some of the stuff we're sitting national teams post and they're hitting they're defending they're defending and i just go my mind is blown i don't even know how you move that fast in such a yeah. such a short space while sitting mm -hmm. like you have no legs to like push you like what do you exactly. do <laughs> you know it, it's mind-blowing how great it is um yeah. and I mean, i'm talking about the national team level but like even the tournament last year you could sit and watch that all day man Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there's so much positive, not just in terms of of interactions between people, but yeah. genuinely some good rallies and gameplay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I think everyone was just really enjoying themselves. Yeah, yeah, it was a really fun time. The, what the score was, everyone was just um, so so happy to be there and uh, and see the even from the beginning of the day to the end the improvement in some teams and some players like that was um <laughs> that, that was awesome to see and then the refs were fantastic the, the oh, yeah. uh from the OVA like they just they also just made that that tournament uh, honestly those group of guys the referees i mean we cannot thank them enough um yeah. i think later this this month end of this month they have their own um sitting volleyball like review um they're having a sitting volleyball head ref from volleyball canada speak to to online to the entire um officials fraternity and uh, honestly the the three main ones that we have here are just exemplar yeah. human beings uh in terms of how they interact with everyone um a disability or not but they do like they so control the flow of the day and they just so get it that yeah. it, it did make everything enjoyable, yeah. you know? Okay. And I mean, these guys, they're older guys. They don't even take water breaks sometimes. It just blew my mind. Like I had to tell them, I'm going for food for you. What do you want? Yeah. Uh, no, we'll talk about that later. No, you're going to get, you know, hungry and you guys are going nonstop, buddy. Like this isn't easy. Yeah. So, um, you know, they really love, love and are dedicated to uh this sport and the people in it um so we've given a really good story about the officials but i have to ask like from where we sit in the ova what could we do better for integration should we do better i mean aside from like giving voice to this and continuing building what we're doing is there anything that's outstanding in your brain that you go man i wish you ova would help with and then fill in the blank don't nothing at the top of my head right now, honestly. <laughs> yeah. If you I ever have something done, off the top of your head, tell me. Yeah, yeah for sure. You I think, think probably the more like tournaments like we did, mm -hmm. things like that, and and just, just even getting more able people, able-bodied people, um, just participating in sitting volleyball and being aware of it. Um, the more I feel like when penguins when we started the the sitting volleyball and people started hearing of it and they they really weren't familiar uh, with the sport at all and all yeah yeah, yeah at the beginning they thought we were sitting in wheelchairs to play volleyball yeah. so yeah. many of people yeah. did yeah <laughs> we're like no you have to actually transfer on the floor like people okay. just thought you could just come in your chair and play that's <laughs> not how it works yeah <laughs> and then you just tell them to YouTube it and then yeah. they get back to you and say. Okay, I YouTube sitting volleyball and saw from the Olympics. Are you guys really playing that? Yeah. And we say yes. Obviously, it looks the exact same when we play at practice. Yeah, but, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I know from our end again that um, like having every coach in every club and every administrator, they kind of push life skills to our kids, which is a really nice thing about or sport. They're very life skill focused, you know? Yeah, yes, you have some clubs and some coaches and some teams that are on the side of being more competitive versus more developmental. Um, it's just their marketing, it's just their DNA. That's probably not gonna change, but they still focus on, on like building really good life skills. But you don't really hear them talking about integration too much. They don't talk about equality too much. Um, 
prior to 2020. For 2020, because of the the George Floyd incident and the Black Lives Matter movement, it put a lens on a lot of our coaches, our administrators, and even our athletes speaking out. Um, and they've not just gone to looking at like racialized equality and systemic racism. They're looking like equality, equality. Um, it's, it's sort of how like these these online conversations have started. Um, so this is one thing that we've uh, made a commitment to say that, you know what, um, Volvo Canada has, has recently done it. They said sitting Volvo is going to be a core program for us. It, it wasn't as core as it is now. Um, where all the provinces are engaged in doing it, that they're investing more resources into it. Um, we have decided to do exactly the same thing years ago, but now we want to make it that the conversations about Sydney football and about working with persons with disabilities and about integrating them in your club beyond just playing the sport, but as your volunteers, as your administrators, as as uh, coaches, you name it. Um, and we already have kids with disabilities who are athletes and play with our able-bodied. Uh, one of them actually played in the Niagara tournament um, and uh, like having that conversation, pushing them to do that more and encouraging them to say, you know, when we give you life skill stuff in a pamphlet or in a manual, we're integrating in this now. When we have workshops for anyone, Sydney Volvo is going to be a part of it. It may not even be in written curriculum yet, but we're going to open up that conversation. So I hope that uh, culturally we build that into part of our DNA in Ontario. Um, to make it a more welcoming environment for persons with disabilities on a whole in our sport. Yeah, that would be totally great. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ali, do you have anything to add on your end or? No, um, yeah. just wanted to thank Loretta again for, for joining us and. Um... One more thing though, I got one something to add. I asked Loretta on via email, like I did with Chris. Chris has his social media handles and is managed and run like an athlete athlete, you know? I asked her, Loretta, what do you want me to push? She said, you want to talk about some of the Penguin stuff. So, Loretta, the floor is yours for whatever you want to talk about. Well, I just wanted to mention for that, the past year, the way Penguins handled the pandemic is that we created a, a private Facebook group that mm -hmm. our athletes, our coaches, our volunteers could all interact. And we actually have th sessions running three days a week that, wow. that I actually am in charge of that I do. So we had to do like a get active session, which is like a yoga session, like a dance, whatever, a fun type of session for our kids. And then we have a social time. And then we have our more com like our competitor groups, like our sitting volleyball, our basketball, all get together on Saturdays and do like a CrossFit workout or some type of fitness type of activity. Just keep our training up. So we're not going back in after this pandemic, not been training the whole time, right? So. That's amazing. You guys kept engaged during the entire time. I knew that because I follow you guys on Instagram and I saw they, like, whoa, this is good. Um, but I have a question. If you're not from the Niagara area and you want to join that group for the online stuff, can you? Oh, yes, you can. We actually have somebody from Sudbury that joins us for some of our sessions. So. Wow. So what I do is I just put out the link and if they want to join us, they just email me and then I send out the link to them. Okay. Well, we'll definitely add in the show notes. Uh, mm -hmm. The link to the Niagara, um, Brock Niagara, I always forget the Brock part, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, the Brock Niagara Penguins Facebook page. Um, I'll put your Instagram in there too, because I think a lot of the people- A lot of stuff are, goes there. Yeah, yeah, our following is mainly on Instagram. It's shifted a lot into there over 2020. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll put that in there as well and, and in the show notes in YouTube as well. So Perfect. anyone could just jump in, click on and join. It's yeah. been a, a great way to keep everybody engaged and not like looking at the positive of it instead of like, focusing on the negative, right? So. Excellent. That's yeah. so I excellent. That's, I think that's just also a testament to uh, the Brock Niagara Penguins and, and the people who are part of the organization of, of how passionate they are about um, creating these opportunities for people to take part in. So, and I know Loretta is a, a big part of that. So uh, kudos to you and, and the others. We literally had this up within a week of the pandemic hitting. <laughs> so that, it, it was really fast. That is way faster than we did. I can tell you that. I mean, we were, I thought we were fast. You guys did break the record. Yeah. Well, that it helps when you have a group of us helping out. So. All right. Well, Loretta, thank you uh, again for speaking to us. And I really look forward to getting to meet you on the court again, because I have to come down to you guys to shoot some video, some skill video and stuff. Um, uh, we actually got a grant from 
um, Parasport Canada to do that. But then the pandemic hit. And then I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to reach out for December. And then we went into lockdown. Um, so that was fun. Oh, yes. But we'll make that happen soon since things are opening up and everyone's getting their vaccines. And, you know, we'll do it in small batches, but we can make it happen. Right. Just yeah, give, us okay. couple, give us a couple practices first. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We have to get back to it. We yeah. have to get, <laughs> get back into it a little bit. And then, you know, yeah, I don't do anything bit. unscripted. It, it, sometimes it sounds unscripted, but I do. Like you, you've you've seen the process, Alex. Yeah. Like everything's thought out. You're gonna have lots of time. Trust me. Perfect. Trust me. <laughs> you know, I, and honestly, when it comes to video, I think catching the most authentic thing is the best thing. And there's also editing. Never forget. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Loretta, thank you again. And Ali, again, thank you so much for being my co-host for this. You've really made the flow a magical one. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks, Good night. No Good night, guys.